While retirement is generally seen as a time of relaxation and self-focus, God calls us to love, serve, and help others for a lifetime. He has been preparing us for this retirement season literally our entire lives. In retirement, countless Christians enter a state of spiritual dormancy, not knowing how they are called to have an impact for God's kingdom. The Retirement Reformation seeks to encourage and empower the 50 million Christians approaching or in retirement to embrace the calling God has been preparing in them. When the world says it's time to stop, you can begin to have your greatest impact. Welcome to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation, where our goal is to journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Reaching out to the 50 million Christ followers in America who are approaching or already in retirement, you've tuned into I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. I'm privileged to be your host, Jim Brangenberg, along with Bruce Brinesman, the founder of the Retirement Reformation. Can't wait for you to hear our conversation today. Please check us out online at retirementreformation.org, retirementreformation.org, and in the App Store, Retirement Reformation. Love for you to consider signing the Retirement Reformation Manifesto. It will change your life as you read about how you are going to sign. You're just going to reject the world's idea of retirement and accept what God's got for you in these retirement years. We're in the middle of a four-part series talking about making a difference in our retirement. In our first show, we talked about making a decision to make a difference. Today's show, we're going to talk about forming a plan, putting a plan together because we've got a decision to make. We have to decide we're going to make a difference in our retirement. And so Bruce joins us to help us figure out how we're going to do do all that. You know, last week, Bruce, we talked about making a decision and how we're going to make a difference in our retirement years. This week, we got to take that step further and make a plan based on that decision. Can you share a story from your, you and your wife, Judy, and how you two came together to make a plan for making a difference? One of the interesting, one of the interesting parts about planning is that you have to decide what it is that you are not going to do. All right. Think about that for a minute. That's a deep one. Think about the things you're not going to do. Because when you start with a open book that has nothing written on it, it can go anywhere. So the first, after you make the decision that you want to go somewhere, that you really do want to make a difference, then what is it that you're not going to do? Interestingly enough, one of the ways for Judy and myself that we navigated through that process was to go through an understanding of what are the unique talents, gifts, and how have we each been prepared during the course of a now a very long life? Uh, how have we been prepared to be able to move forward? When you look at the ways that you have been prepared, one of the things that then becomes clear is what you are not prepared for. And that then starts to provide the context, God's context, for how he has created us and prepared us and then starts to focus us. In the, uh, I think in the, um, uh, in the interview that we did uh, within the last couple of weeks with Diane Lonsdale, it was interesting. She talked about just one idea that God planted in her, all kinds of things around it, but that started to give her direction and it was the basis for starting a plan. Oh, oh, Each oh. one of us has a basis for starting the plan. Okay, so let's get personal. I'm always having to dig this out of here. Uh, come on, Bruce. Let me. You and Judy, what did you decide that you weren't going to do? We decided that we uh, weren't going to live in South Florida. It's hot and muggy here anyway. As a matter of fact, it's kind of interesting. As part of our process, we took about probably about eight months And we started out making a list of where would we like to live when we retire. And then we narrowed that list down. And it was fascinating to see what the list was. It kind of surprised us. Uh, There was a place in Turkey. There was a place in Israel. There were, you know, three or four places in the United States. Um, You know, the French Polynesia. Then we narrowed that down 
to say, no, where is it that God has called us to do, called us to be? And so we, we took all of those things and said, we're not going there. We are. And then you know what happened? We realized that the place wasn't that important. What we realized was in, in what position did God want to put us regardless of the geography that would in fact then allow us to take steps for him. And we realized that being able to be active in ministry, being able to give leadership to a movement, uh, being able to be in a spot where we could connect with people from around the world. Uh, and, and then as would have it, uh, we go from Pasadena, California to Colorado Springs. Now, Judy did mention this morning that it's been awfully cold here for a while. <laughs> so uh, I, I may sense another conversation coming up. But that whole process of, of what aren't you going to do, finding the boundaries, and then understanding how God has prepared you is three key basic steps in moving forward. And that's really what Retirement Reformation is all about, helping people make this decision and then stick to that level of intentionality through their retirement years. And you give them lots of things through the membership options uh, to be able to execute on this making a pl- making a difference, but making a decision to make a difference. All right, so you guys made this decision. You ended up in Colorado Springs, ha- and you've got other things you're working on. Has the plan changed along the way? The plan well, God's plan never changes. Right, but as you understood plan, God's plan, did it change? Our plan always changes uh, because there's two things that happen. God, the circumstances with which you are ministering and being called to minister, that is an evolving uh, reality. And then secondly, you're changing. You know, we talk about two of the great benefits of growing older. One is you're able to grow spiritually, and the other one you're able to grow emotionally. And just take those two characteristics. You read any of the books, my books, and you'll see other areas. But just take those two. We are we are a we are a, a process in motion to be able to bring God glory in increasingly impactful ways, but typically in ways that we don't expect. So, was the plan that you made? impacted by your family or health considerations? Was that part of the decision-making process? And for many people, it is. Uh, The conversation about our, you know, where are we going to live in relationship to our kids? And grandkids. It's more about the grandkids, grandkids, isn't it? Maybe even more importantly. Matter of fact, just a reminder for us that, you know, the complexities of of these times, because, because of our longevity, you know, there may be five generations alive at the same time. That's complex, man. Uh, but for Judy and myself, it was it was less about those things and more about ministry opportunity. Right. So the plan helps you get down the road to actually making a difference in retirement. Without a plan, do you think you'd actually be making a difference? It would be random at best. And... Our God is an intentional God. You know, read the Old Testament. Right. Um, You know, we have an intentional God who's a God of growth, who's a God who is is worthy to be praised, has a plan, prepares us, and then sends in the power of his Holy Spirit. And we don't talk about that enough. And and then his presence with us to be able to to have guidance. I'm going to tell you just a, a quick story. All right. Um, this morning when I got up, I intended to have breakfast at home. As I was getting dressed, um, said, you know, Bruce, you ought to go to omelets, et cetera, and have breakfast. I said, oh, no, I don't have the time for that. Said, no, you need to do that. So I, okay, so I walked out of the house, got in the car, drove down to omelets, et cetera. When I get to omelets, et cetera, a little dive, not a dive, but a small restaurant. And, uh, they have, you know, good breakfast. And there were five guys from my church there that were having breakfast. I didn't know they were going to be there. So I walk in. I go, oh, my goodness. Hey, hey, come on, join us. So as a result of joining them for breakfast, uh, I had the opportunity to reconnect with Chris Ratliff, 
Crystal Ratliff told me the story this morning at about 7.30 that, in fact, they were selling everything and were, in fact, going to Iraq. I went, whoa, there's a man with a plan. Mm -hmm. That's really impressive. And we're going to cover that story on a future podcast, too. Absolutely, we are. So my point of the story is just simply, do things change? Absolutely, they do. Every day and every way, if you listen and then follow what he prompts you to do. Hmm. Well, we're talking about making a plan to make a difference in your retirement. First, you got to make a decision you want to make a difference, and you got to start planning to make a difference. When we come back, you're going to hear from Brian Cluth how he and his wife not only made a decision to make a difference, made a plan, they are executing their plan. We'll be right back with more on I Retire For Him. There is a move of God in our country called the Retirement Reformation. It's not enough to sit in the grandstands of life, watching the days go by with leisure as a reward. Join us back on the playing field of life, discovering God's plan for you, and building purpose and intentionality into every day. Go to retirementreformation.org and click on the Resources tab. Check out our prayer walk and start ministering to your neighbors through prayer today. Connect with your ongoing journey by downloading the prayer app at retirementreformation.org. Click on the Resources tab. Make the journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Now, let's get back to the show. Hey, welcome back to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. Bruce, every second segment of the show, you always bring in somebody that's got a great story. And today, you got somebody that's got a great story and another ministry and resource for our listeners. Bruce, why don't you introduce our guest for the day? Well, everybody, I'd like to have you meet my friend, Brian Clue. Brian is um, one of those unusual people that God has used him mightily in ministry, over a long period of time, and we were we were blessed to be able to really connect when uh, he was part of a team that God led to put together the Retirement Reformation Manifesto. And so during those two days that we spent together at that point in time and in prayer and conversation, uh, Brian's insights, experience, and, and comments were just absolutely critical to the formation of that Retirement Reformation uh, manifesto. Since that time, he's continued down the path of telling the story. So, Brian, just give us a, a quick overview of you know where God's got you and and, and kind of where you're going. Yeah, you bet, Bruce. Hey, uh, well, I'm Brian Cluth, live in Denver, Colorado. Uh, Going to turn 66 this year, uh, but I'm more excited for the future and for serving God than I have in my lifetime. And I've served God a lot of my lifetime. I'm believing God for more impact in the future, more impact and influence in the future than I've ever had in the past. Uh, And in the past, I've been a best-selling author. Uh, Over a million copies of my materials have been used by about 4,000 churches and ministries that have distributed them. I do a lot on legacy and generosity. I'm a speaker. I do a lot of radio, radio interviews on the Bless Your Pastor movement. I help churches love on their pastors well. But anyway, so... That's a little bit about me, but we just, my wife and I just wrote a retirement rewired course and it's a 12, it's 12 worksheets Uh, and you do a worksheet each session and there's a little video and we did this with a few couple or did it with two online groups this last year and God used that to show us what we're to do in our future in the next two years we're buying, we bought a motor home. And we're going to be going to probably 165 cities, four regional trips, talking on the radio, bless your pastor, doing free guest speaking at churches, giving away all my material wherever I go for free, and just trusting God to use us. And then we're also involved in Africa, and we're looking forward to doing some wonderful things in Africa in the next couple of years. Well, one of the things that occurs to me as you as you begin and continue on that tour, um, you know, maybe every five or six weeks, uh, we need to connect from wherever you are. Sure. See whatever kind of background you got and how God is using that, that material that he's asked you to put together. And we want to be able to promote that, your tour, yep. as well as the material on the retirement reformation. So 
Tell me about the 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 point of decision, if you can go to that, uh, where you and your bride said, hey, we need to buy a motor home and travel around the country like a bunch of gypsies uh, telling this retirement story. Can you go to that point and, and yeah, I talk can. about the decision? In, 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 in our little workbook, and it's free. Anybody can go get this online. So you don't even have to pay me right now. You can go, go to retirementrewired.com and get it. You can look at it. But there's this little graphic, and, there, and there's four circles. You enjoy it. The world needs it. God is pleased with it. And you're good at it. All right? When you take you enjoy it and the world needs it, that's a mission. When you take the world needs it and God is pleased with it, that's a ministry. When you take your good at it and God is pleased with it, that's a calling. And when you're good at it and you enjoy it, that's a passion. Well, in the middle of all those four circles is your purpose. So I I love speaking. I love writing. The world needs what I have to say and what I have to share. God is pleased when we engage people and to live generous lives and lives that have a legacy impact. And I believe we're good at it and we like traveling. So you put all that together and we said, hey, we can do this. This fits the purpose for our future. Like we can work and serve the Lord. We can see family and friends. I remember my wife one day, I said, so what do you think, honey? And she said, let's do it. <laughs> and, I'll, and so let's do it. That was her, her phrase that gave me the permission to say, let's start planning it. And I have grant funds to actually help pay for all of this. So that's another unique piece of this. It's all grant funded, all my travel, which is a God, a God thing that happened. But anyway, so that was one thing when she said, let's do it. And then the second piece was when we looked at the RV, because she said, I, I can never drive one of those things. And I said, well, let's drive one. And uh, she drove one, and then we found one to potentially buy. And it's a Mercedes van with a box on the back, basically. And um, she said, I, I can do this, and, and let's buy this. And she actually helped. She had some money of her own money that she helped buy the RV. So uh, God provided grant funds for the travel, and she had some money set aside to buy the RV, and we're doing it. So, uh, and since then, she's like, "What did I get myself into?" <laughs> <laughs> so, well, what is because your plan? She- so, you said 165 cities, Brian. That's a lot of travel. That's fantastic. Love that idea. I mean, traveling this country, meeting people. Uh, we've gotten to do that a lot for I work for him. Yeah. What is your plan? Uh, how do you plan on bringing the message of retirement? Re- wired.com to the population of America. All right. Well, there, I actually have several things on this tour. So I've got to do bless your pastor interview. So I'm going to do that. But then I, what I'm doing is I'm saying, and I have to meet with the nominations. That's part of my job. I work with denominations. So we'll visit denominations. We'll visit radio stations. But any, like even to anyone watching me, you can go to, you can go to blessingstour.org, blessingstour.org. And on there, it'll say free guest speaking. So if you see I'm coming through your town, right, your town, you literally can say, oh, Brian's in my town on June 6th. You can plan an evening gathering or sometimes it could be an afternoon gathering and you gather people 55 plus and we'll just meet with them. We'll share our story of legacy living and giving. We'll have interactive time Q&A and we'll gift people all my materials, the Christian, the Christian legacy organizer I wrote. Uh, Mary Ellen's uh, story on my story for God's glory. We were both widowed and remarried. I will share those stories. We'll tell stories of Africa, what we're doing there. And that's a legacy work in memory of my first wife that uh, went to heaven at 54. And so we will just go wherever we're invited and it's no cost free. So anybody that can gather 10 or more people in a living room or at a church on our, our trip, just let us know. And we'll, we'll, we'll be there. We'll pull up in the, in the, in the, in the RV and we'll be ready to serve you. And then the next day we'll go on to the next town. So uh, let's see, May, so May, June, July will be Midwest to East Coast. Uh, September, October will be down to Texas, all the way to Florida and back to Denver. And then next year, Northern states and Western states. So that's, those are the four trips. And we're just gonna go where people invite us to speak. And I'll speak at churches also on, on the weekends, wherever invited, and again, no cost. All my materials for free and no cost for our speaking. Anyone that wants to bless us or help us, they can help our work in Africa. What's your hope? I mean, what's your hope? Sitting down with 55 plus year olds across the country. What is your hope? What do you want to, you know, at the end of next year's travel, after you've hit all four sectors of the country, by the way, are you not driving to Alaska? People in Alaska will be disappointed. 
Maybe year three. And okay. And we'll drive to Hawaii. And you drive to Hawaii. I, I, yeah. I, I, when you're going to do that, call me. I'll come with yeah, you. Yeah. We I, could. I think the hope is to put a, a to light a fire under people or to throw a log on their fire. God, if you if you got a pulse, you've got a purpose. God is not done with you. And I believe some of your greatest years of effectiveness and greatest years of influence are ahead of you, not behind you. Your career might be behind you, but your kingdom purposes are ahead of you. So you've got to look at what do you enjoy? What does the world need? What's God pleased with? What are you good at? Put that all together and then do it for the glory of God. That's that's my desire is to start a fire or throw a log on fi- of the fire of people, to and but then to equip them. It's one thing to challenge people to do something, but then they're like, well, I don't know what to do. No, we will help you with my worksheets. You will get, have all the work you need to really figure things out. What are your skills? What are your spiritual gifts? What are your finances? What are your desires? What are your wishes? What are you good at? You put that all together and go through that as a couple or even as a as a Sunday school group or a Bible study group or a, a Zoom group. You do that with some people. You talk about it, and God will light the fire, and he'll show you. He will show you the path to go forward for his purpose and his glory. Yeah, he definitely will. No question about it. Yeah. The uh You've got to you got to be committed to making a difference. Yeah. Secondly, you got to make a decision, mm-hmm. and then you got to get on the pathway. Yeah, absolutely. Make Bruce. that plan for yeah. sure. Brian Kluth, thanks so much for being on I Retire for him. Thanks for sharing all about retirementrewired.com. And what was the hold bus on, tour? Second, Bless hold on. Oh, I've, oh. I've got one. I've got one. I've got one. Okay, re- but hold on. But one wait, re- just yes. wait. There's more. Just wait. There's more. So I want you to call me when you're. When, you're, when your coach is broken down, you're sitting on the side of the road somewhere in Iowa, yeah. I want you to call me and I'm going to, and I, I want to film that because I want to put that back on. Because just like everybody else, hey, the pathway's all smooth until it's not. And then yeah. you got to figure out how you're going to go forward. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that conversation. That's right. Well, and, and the other website is blessingstour.org, blessingstour.org. And if you go there, you get all the information and I can come to your church or come to your Bible study or come to your home group or come whatever, whatever. So just let us know. We'd love to serve you and love to be an encouragement and an example to those, to you and to those you care about because, hey, life is too, life is too important to waste. Thank you, God Brian bless. Kluth. Thank you, Brian hey, Kluth. Thanks. Hey, God bless. All right. We'll be right back with more of I Retire For Him. You've spent decades making financial plans for your retirement years. But have you done any life planning? God has a plan for your life, and it includes living out your faith in your retirement years with meaning, purpose, and intentionality. Go out to retirementreformation.org and click on our Resources tab. Download a copy of the book, Charting Your Course, and get started with life planning today. Simply download a copy of Charting Your Course at retirementreformation.org. Make the journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Now let's get back to the show. Hey, welcome back to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation. Bruce, what a phenomenal story about how Brian and his bride are going to be traveling across the country, inspiring people through the retirement rewired, all the material you put together. But they made a decision. They made a decision to make a difference in their retirement. And then they, so they made that decision. They want to make a difference. Then they put together a plan, which is what we're talking about today. And then they executed that plan. As let we, me Go ahead. Let, let, let me just make this observation for our audience. When you listen to what Brian said, the key decision was when his wife said, let's do it. That's right. Let's do it. It, 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 There were lots of things that surround that to me be able to make that. But the decision itself is an easy one, a simple one, and a direct one. Let's do it. I think you may be oversimplifying that a little bit, Bruce. Not that I disagree with you, that it just takes a second to make a decision. But I'm guessing that a lot of things played into it. What are some of the necessary parts of every plan as we formulate a plan after we've decided to make a difference, we've made a decision to make a difference. 
What are some of those pieces of the plan that you think we need to have? Well, you need to have that vision okay. of what will happen if you, ex- if you not only build the plan, but then execute it. All right. Good. You need to have a picture of where it is that God is going. You know, what's it going to look like? You asked Brian the, the question. As a result of traveling around to 150 locations around the country and doing all the things that, that he talked about that they were going to do, when you asked him, so what's the net result? It was a very simple answer. We're going to throw a log on the fire of Jesus believers to be able to make a decision, make a difference, and do something. That's not complicated. Right. And that's the that's vision part. But yet, when he and his, and when he and his wife, um, Mary Ellen, sat down to start formulating his plan, they also went and looked at motorhomes. They had a budget. She had to figure out whether she was going to drive the motor home or not. So he didn't have to drive across the country to 165 different cities. So they, have, so they matched their passions, but they had to look at a budget. They had, to, they had to look at, she had to drive the motor home to figure out, okay, do I really want to do this? There was, a, there was some pieces, but eventually once she had all the facts, she was like, of course, this is what God is saying. And that really is for a guy. That is the, deline- the defining factors when our wives say, yes, I hear God saying the same thing that he's telling you. And there are a lot of pieces in the reimagined workbook that he talked about and in, in the recreate retirement study guide that will be out here oh, shortly right. uh, from, from us. They are very similar goals, similar objectives, similar realities that you need to understand the pieces to the puzzle in order to create a mosaic that in fact you can follow. So when you and Judy made a plan to make a difference, you made a decision to make a difference, then you made a plan, and you start executing the plan. Was this like put in writing, or did you, was it kind of loosey-goosey, not in writing? No, it was very much, uh, in, in our case, it was very much taking the first pass at putting it in writing, realizing that it's going to evolve, it's going to change, it's going to grow. But putting it down in writing has, you know, God knew that. How do we know? Because <laughs> we see his stuff in writing. Think of the Ten Commandments. Think of all the stories of our patriarchs. And so knowing that it's in, putting it down in writing has an amazing cathartic um, effect. Sure. And it brings clarity and, and brings specific, specific, specificity, just like you said. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we got that. And, and, and provides the frame, the, the boundaries for what it is that we're going to start doing. I remember the story of the, uh, uh, of, of, the, of the couple that made the decision that they were going to make a difference working with kids. Well, I won't tell you the, each step of the way along the story, but it first started with kids at the church, and they ended up with an orphanage in Africa. Wow. And so when they started with the kids in the church and had that first vision of, 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 of a direction, they had no idea that they would be in, a, with, in an orphanage in Africa. But once begun, it's half done. Right. All right. So we're, we're talking about making a decision to make a difference in your retirement. That's, that's the series we're talking about. And of course, we have lots of resources out on the Retirement Reformation website, retirementreformation.org, that can help you do this through our membership, op- membership options, which is one of them is free. Bruce, here's the thing. So we're, we're, we, first we make that decision to make a difference, and then we start putting together a plan. Is it okay to put in, as a Christ follower, as a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, is it okay to put some nonsense in our, in our, in our plan? Is it okay to plan vacations and a little relaxing time. Is it okay for us to experience a little of that freedom and have unplanned planned or planned unplanned time? Is that okay? Oh, let me give you an example. Uh, the couple X, um, couple X is Judy and myself. We're going to, we're going to go on a cruise and we specifically have chosen where that cruise is going to go. We also setting aside X amount of money so that when we are in the towns where the cruise stops, we're able to go and focus on where are the needs, find the local people of peace who are also 
uh, impacting others and be able to bless them with some of those resources. Now, there's a combination. I'm so excited about some of the places we're going to go because I've never been there before. But I also know that God's got a plan in each one of those places, and we are prepared to respond as he prompts us to be able to make a difference, an impact on those lives. So you're going to have some fun executing your plan to live out with intentionality, making a difference in your retirement. I like that. I think it's just okay that people understand we're not totally bashing the entire the American dream of retirement. We just don't want you to spend your entire 30 years being checked out. It's okay to have some fun. You've worked really hard. And a lot of times that fun's going to be going out and seeing kids and going out and see parts of the country or the world that you've never seen before. But we're talking about all the rest of your time, plan with intentionality, make a decision to make a difference. How can the Retirement Reformation help us put together this plan? First of all, about helping you. So for example, here's one of the books in the, in the series called Moving Forward is the first one. This one, or the, the Finding Freedom, this is moving forward, and it, it helps you to identify those pieces of the mosaic to do that. The last one in that series is charting your course. So taking what you, the, the aha from finding freedom, the reality from moving forward, and then being able to put those pieces together in a way that is your next step in the plan. Can the retirement reformation, let's just say I'm struggling putting together my plan. I've already made a decision to make a difference and I want to write a plan. Can the retirement reformation, is there one level of membership that actually can get me a mentor or somebody to hit me upside the two by, with a two by four upside my head to actually help me write the plan down? Yeah, there absolutely is. We believe that, that all of us need a coach. We know that the Holy Spirit is the best coach, the final coach, but there needs to be help to help us ask the right questions to be able to listen for those answers and then to be able to apply them in a way. And so through the Retirement Reformation, we have a whole coaching capacity there, both for to be coached, as well as if you would like to become a coach or you would like to become a mentor. All of those areas are important. You know, when Christ, when Christ devised the church and said, right. this is my body, it was because He has all the pieces. Each one of us just has some of the pieces. And so bringing that all together is absolutely critical. So a coaching program uh, through the Retirement Reformation is critically important. As a matter of fact, if the first five people that hear this, whenever it is that we play it, want to give me a call and you can put the number up, um, we'll provide a free coaching session for them to be able to experience what that is like. So the first five people that uh, they give a call when they hear this, will set up a free coaching session for them to experience what it's like. I know coaching has helped me to clarify what, what God is, is doing in my life and then to give me some additional direction. Uh, what a deal. First five that contact us on our website, retirementreformation.org. We'll get a free coaching session, retirementreformation.org. Thank you, Bruce Brinesma, for being on the show today. You've been listening to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation with your host, Jim Brangenberg, and of course, the founder of the Retirement Reformation, Bruce Brinesma. We're Christ followers, journeying from retirement to reformation. So ultimately, we can say, I retire for him. I retire for him. Thanks for listening to I Retire For Him with your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg and Retirement Reformation founder, Bruce Brinesma. I Retire For Him is the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation. Most Christians tend to follow the world's pattern of rest and self-pampering during retirement. However, in your retirement, you can be focused on God's unique call to love, serve, and help others. This can be your best season of life if you take advantage of a life's worth of knowledge and experience and combine it with a greater freedom of time and money and invest it all in the generations both preceding and following you. The Retirement Reformation is encouraging Christians to find and follow God's call in all seasons and aspects of life, especially in retirement. Take time to sign the manifesto at retirementreformation.org and explore the wealth of resources available on our site. 
Join this movement of God and journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Go to retirementreformation.org.